Most people, when learning of World War II, gloss over Japan and its environment in the war. Japan did not get as involved in the European theater during the war, so therefore most people gloss over Japan and the Atlantic theater by brushing over the island-hopping tactics used by America against Imperial Japan, not delving into the environmental factor that fostered the war on Japan's side like some teach about Germany's political atmosphere. Most people never even touched the eastern side of the globe in the American education system, save for the few times one of the Asian countries stepped into European politics slash wars. So, for educational purposes, this essay will focus on Japan's history before, during, and after World Japan's War Japan's history is divided into periods, famous periods including the Edo period, the rise and fall of the samurai, and the Meiji period, their industrial revolution. To start off, Japan had a large rise of right-wing nationalism, just like Germany and Italy had started off with. Though unlike Germany, they weren't looking for ethnic cleansing, sort of similarly though, they did want to unite the Eastern Asia's via expanding the Japanese Empire's influence and potentially borders like how Italy and Germany wanted to unite their ethnic groups. Some of the first instances of this right-wing nationalism was before Japan's invasion of Manchuria when right-wing officers had set off explosives near a railroad to stage an attack by China in order to be able to provoke a war between the two countries. The Prime Minister of the time, Tiyushi Inake, was assassinated by the right-wing party members because he was against the Kawatung army and had tried to stop them. On September 19, 1931, the invasion of Manchuria began. Some of the worst horrors of the eastern side of the war would soon be committed by the Japanese army. Japan blazed through a weak and disorganized China and took their capital of Nanking, and over a period of six weeks committed mass murder, rape, and other atrocities. After Japan's defeat in the war, they burned all military documents, and it's unknown how many people truly died in the tragedy, but it was quoted and estimated to be over 200,000. Leading up to the war, Japan signed the Anti-Kermitan Pact with Germany in November of 1936, which would later be replaced by the Triparte Pact in 1940. Though in 1936, Japan was not thinking about participating in a huge war like what Hitler was planning, but by the time of the Triparte Pact, relations got a bit worse. Both Germany and Japan thought they were racially superior and adding to the huge distance to them didn't help. Both countries really didn't get along too well, just barely enough to stick together in the war. Japan's early war was looking good on their side. Their attack on Her Pearl Harbor was a major success in their eyes, though in the long run it would bring a majorly powerful opponent in the ring. The Japanese occupied the Philippines' capital. Along with this, they also took Singapore and the Dutch East Indies in early March, along with miscellaneous islands in the Pacific Ocean, though their invasion of China had come to a stalemate and wasn't progressing any further. The Battle of Midway, as many people know it, was the turning point where Japanese where the Japanese forces were forced to the defensive. The Battle of Gawanda Canal was also known as one of the first retreats from Japan at the time. The defeat at Midway was a wake-up call that told Japan they were losing the war badly, and after a loss of the previous cabinet, the Tojo cabinet dissolved and was replaced by Kyoso Kunakai's cabinet. This cabinet, after a meeting with the emperor, decided to try and end the war with peace, contacting the Soviet Union first and having a declaration called the Postum Declaration, stating that Japan would not be enslaved as a race nor destroyed as a nation, although this would not mark the end of the war before the atom bombs did. After the war, Japan was occupied from 1942 to 1952. Led by the Allied forces, this was a rapid period of social and economic growth, where a lot of government ideals were borrowed from other countries. Along with this, heavy rationing was induced and was only available to people with family registrations. Some returning soldiers had their family registra registration taken. As Masahiro Kawato said, post-war Japan was unbelievable. We all suffered. Everything was rationed and I was without fa a family registration. Therefore, I could get no rations. Though there was a special government order that gave many people their family registrations back in about 1949, as stated by Masahiro, I carried on my life in this manner for the next three years. Finally, my nationality and name in the family registry were reinstated by a special government order. Along with this, Japan was demilitarized, only allowed a small military to which it continues to ha have for self-defense. Continuing this, they dismantled the empire and helped them make a new constitution, removing anyone who was in power during the empire and bringing in new people. Major economic changes, such as the way land is distributed, helped, the, helped farmers greatly, and a new education system helped the country grow into a more democratic country overall. After everything was sorted out for most of Japan's history, it shrank to a small scale. Most changes coming economically after the Korean War and socially as, the, as a decline of birth rates that can cripple this country permanently started around the time. Japan's history obviously spans longer than this short period but it's a good start to point out more of Eastern history in general. I hope that this can spark your interest in more general history and people. 
The saying that history repeats itself will forever be true unless we learn from the past in all forms and from every aspect. From every corner of the Earth's history is an important subject that should not be ignored.